November 12, 2006. The Tennessee Titans have been atrocious all season and are taking on the vaunted Baltimore Ravens. Some even make the argument that the Ravens of 2006 had a better defense than the Ravens of 2000 that ended up winning Super Bowl 35. Baltimore finished that season allowing a mere 12.6 points per game, which was first in the league, and they had a front seven that accounted for 60 sacks. Seven of the 11 players on the Baltimore defense that season ended up making the Pro Bowl, which goes to show you just how good they were. But on this day, the Titans were having their way. The 2-6 and six Titans had scored on four of their first five drives of the game, and with just under 10 minutes to go in the first half, Tennessee had a 26-7 lead. Nobody could believe it. The Titans were dominating the best defense in pro football. But after that, everything went south. Former Titans quarterback Steve McNair heated up for the Ravens, and Baltimore scored 20 unanswered points to win it 27-26. With under four minutes left in the game, former Titan legend Steve McNair found former Titan legend Derek Mason in the end zone to give the Ravens the lead. That one's gotta hurt. And with the loss, the Titans dropped to 2-7. and seven. After 10 weeks, the Titans were seven games out of first place in their division. They were tied with Oakland for the worst record in the AFC. With a negative 97-point differential, they had the worst point differential of any team in the NFL. They had allowed more points than any other team in the AFC, and their average margin of victory was the worst of any team in the league. With less than a week to go before Thanksgiving, the Titans were at rock bottom. Just like the year before in 2005, when the Titans were 2-7 and seven after 10 weeks, Nothing had changed in 2006. In 2005, when the Titans started 2 and 7 after 10 games, they finished 4 and 12 and wound up with the third overall pick in the draft. In 2006, when the Titans started with the same record, they nearly made the playoffs. I'm not kidding. If the Titans somehow finished the deal in week 17, we'd be talking about this as one of the greatest regular season turnarounds of all time. Heck, it probably ranked number one. Last year, when the Colts were 1-5 and five and made the playoffs, that was incredible. But not to take anything away from Indy, but they still had more than half the season to go. Here, the Titans, sitting at 2-7 and seven on the week of Thanksgiving, somehow salvaged their season and nearly made the postseason. This is the story of how they almost did it. This is the greatest turnaround that never happened. Before looking at the turnaround, I guess it's important to note why the Titans were in this hole to begin with. For one, they were a careless team with the football. In their first nine games, they went 2-0 in games where they didn't turn it over, and 0-7 when they did. In their first eight games, they had five games where they had multiple turnovers. And when they started the season 0-5, they turned it over 12 times in that stretch. Obviously, that's not a recipe for winning games. Their defense was one of the worst in the AFC, as the team had given up 243 points through the first nine games. Some of the numbers were just atrocious. 37 points allowed to the Jaguars. 40 points allowed to the Chargers. 45 points allowed in a home game to the Cowboys. It was the most points allowed by the team through nine games since they moved to Tennessee, and the most they've allowed since 1984, when they were the Oilers. And it really doesn't help when you cannot stop the run. Through the first nine games, Tennessee allowed the second most rushing yards in football. 241 yards to the Chargers is somewhat excusable, since LaDainian Tomlinson was a one-man wrecking crew that year, but 217 yards to the Cowboys and 159 to the Dolphins is less so. As a side note, somehow, the team that allowed the most rushing yards in football through nine games ended up winning the Super Bowl. Go figure. And then, of course, there's the offense, which was sputtering to say the least. Through three games, the Titans had found the end zone just four times. Three of those touchdowns came in the fourth quarter. Kerry Collins was atrocious in the first three starts of the season. 
throwing one touchdown and six interceptions while completing less than 47% of his passes. His passer rating was 42.3, which is just marginally better than simply spiking the ball into the ground on every single play. So Jeff Fisher's hand was essentially forced, and he had to play rookie quarterback Vince Young. And, as is to be expected with any rookie quarterback, there were struggles. In his first six starts, Young threw just four touchdown passes and seven interceptions. His passer rating was 54.5, and his completion percentage was less than 48%. So just to recap, they had an offense that couldn't score, a defense that couldn't do anything right, and a team that lost the turnover margin and time of possession battle pretty much every single game. They were in last place in the AFC the week before Thanksgiving. And the Colts were leading the AFC South at 9-0. This was not going to be like a 2010 NFC West or a 2019 NFC East situation where the division was up for grabs. So now, buckle up. Because what's about to happen over the next seven weeks nearly resulted in the greatest single-season turnaround of all time that never fully materialized. Week 11 against the Eagles. Philadelphia entered this game as 13-point favorites. Philadelphia had the ball for over 36 minutes. Vince Young went just 8 for 22. Philadelphia converted 10 third downs. Despite all of that, the Titans won handily. They forced three turnovers and scored twice on defense and special teams to win this one 31-13. Now, they're sitting at 3-7. and seven. Still a lot of work to do, but at least they're no longer the worst team in the AFC anymore, as the Raiders drop to 2-8. and eight. At least the Raiders are in line for the number one pick now, so they can draft their franchise quarterback. Oh. What made this run that's about to happen crazy is that the Eagles game was the only blowout game in this run. The next five games were all super close games decided by one possession. And perhaps no game exemplified this more than their Week 12 matchup against the Giants. The Giants were up 21-0 after three quarters. Though Tennessee made a valiant effort to make it 21-14, they faced a 4th and 10 on their own 24-yard line. Then, Vince Young made some magic happen. What Matthias Kiwanuka was doing there, I have no idea. But it led to Tennessee's scoring, then led to a Pac-Man Jones interception, then led to the game-winning field goal by Rob Baronis. From 21 down with less than 10 minutes left to victory. Now they're 4 and 7. Still highly unlikely that they make the playoffs. But hey, the 96 Jaguars were 4 and 7 and they found their way in. Still some work to be done, especially since they're three games back of the second wildcard spot. They're no better off in the wildcard hunt than they were two weeks ago, but they haven't lost any ground either. Week 13 against the Colts. The Colts were favored by more than a touchdown. The Colts had the best record in football, sitting at 10-1. Indianapolis led 14-0 midway through the second quarter. But again, Tennessee clawed their way back into it, and it was tied at 17 apiece. And once again, Vince Young led a game-winning drive, and once again, Rob Baronis hit the game-winning field goal. This time, it was from 60 yards out. A 60-yarder for the win. Another incredible comeback and finish. Now... The Titans were sitting at 5 and 7. The bad news is that there were still 5 teams sitting at 7 and 5 vying for two wild card spots. The good news is that there are only two back now instead of 3. Still, two games back with 4 to play, it's probably too little too late. Week 14 against the Texans. Houston leads by 4 points midway through the 4th quarter and has Tennessee pinned back on their own 12-yard line. Once again, Vince Young leads a go-ahead drive, as eight minutes later, the Titans take a 20-17 lead. Houston ties it up again on a 46-yarder by Chris Brown, which sets up overtime. The Titans get the ball to start the OT period, and sure enough, Vince Young makes magic happen again. Over the past four weeks, the Titans have gone from the worst team in the AFC to nearly 500. They're 6-7, and there's still two back with three to play for that second wildcard spot. But the fact that they weren't mathematically eliminated at this point is stunning. Week 15 against the Jaguars. 
the Jaguars dominated this game. They had 23 first downs while the Titans had 5. They had 10 third down conversions while the Titans went 0 for 8. They had 396 total yards of offense while the Titans had 98. The Jaguars had the ball for over 44 minutes. So as you can probably expect based on those stats, the Titans won. Yes, somehow, Tennessee scored not one, not two, but three defensive touchdowns to win the game 24-17. The one field goal they had was set up on a 70-yard kickoff return on a drive where the Titans did not record a first down. It's one of the most bizarre stat lines in a victory ever recorded. With two games to play, the Titans were not only at 500 after an 0-5 and 2-7 and start, but they were only one back of the wild card. Week 16 against the Bills. Buffalo leads 29-20 at the end of three quarters. The Titans then proceed to score 10 unanswered in the fourth, as Rob Barona sets a 30-yard field goal with just over two minutes left in the game to make it 30-29. But Buffalo marches down the field and has the ball on Tennessee's 28-yard line. The Bills have one of the best kickers in football. Ryan Lindell was 5-for-5 five five on the day, and during that 2006 season, hit 23 out of 25 field goals. This 92% accuracy was the third best in the league that year. So naturally, on 4th and 5 on the 28-yard line, facing a 45-yard field goal, Buffalo opts to go for it. And shocker, the Bills don't get it. The Titans win. They're now 8-7. From the depths of the AFC to still mathematically alive in Week 17. Through 16 weeks, here's what the standings looked like. As you can tell, while the Titans were 8-7, and seven, so were a bunch of other teams. And to make matters worse for the Titans, the Broncos and Jets were both at 9-6. and six. When tiebreakers are taken into account, Tennessee would need to leapfrog a bunch of teams if they wanted to get that final wildcard spot. And amazingly, as if this season seemingly out of a movie couldn't get any weirder, that almost happened. Just the fact that the Titans got to this point in and of itself was remarkable enough. If they wanted to seal the deal though, they needed a lot of help. There were four things that needed to happen on December 31st, 2006. If they wanted to make the playoffs, Number one, they needed the Jaguars to lose to the Chiefs. Number two, they needed the Steelers to beat the Bengals. Number three, they needed the 49ers to beat the Broncos. And number four, they needed to win their game. If all four of those things happen, they would be playing January football after being last in the AFC on the week of Thanksgiving. If even one of those things did not occur, they'd be on the outside looking in. Well, the Chiefs took care of business at home against the Jaguars, with Larry Johnson running for three touchdowns on Jacksonville's defense. Keep in mind that the Jags had a great run defense that year. There was a five-week stretch just before that game where the Jags allowed an average of 48 rushing yards per game. So for Larry Johnson to destroy Jacksonville's run defense like that was very surprising. Part one done. The Steelers were down 17 to 14 against the Bengals with less than two minutes left and starting their drive inside their own 20-yard line. Ben Roethlisberger, though, managed to lead a game-tying drive, and after Jeff Reed hit a 35-yard field goal, and after Bengals kicker Shane Graham missed a 39-yard field goal at the end of regulation, we were heading for overtime. Pittsburgh got the ball to start off the OT period, and one 67-yard pass to Santonio Holmes later, the Bengals, who entered this game as six-point favorites, were left stunned. Wasn't the first time they had their hearts ripped out late in the season by Pittsburgh, and certainly wouldn't be the last. Part 2 done. Denver was favored by 10 points against the 49ers. San Francisco had lost four of their last five games, and now had to travel on the road to Mile High to a place where they hadn't won since 1973. And amazingly, the 49ers won it in overtime on a 36-yard field goal. They had pulled off the upset. 
part three done. All the Titans had to do now was win their game, and somehow they'd go from two and seven to the playoffs. The Titans were even favored to win this game by three points. It seemed like it was a matter of destiny. Much like seemingly every other game during this stretch, the Titans got into an early hole, trailing 19-3 late in the first half. But they clawed their way back into it, and they were only down 26-23 at the end of the third quarter. With the ball near midfield early in the fourth, and with the Pats playing Matt Castle and Vinny Testaverde at quarterback since their seeding was locked up by this point in the game, this was their opportunity. This was their chance to make the playoffs. Instead, Vince Young threw an interception. The Patriots would score on consecutive drives to end the game and would win 40-23. And just like that, what seemed to be a miracle season came to an abrupt end. I want to close off by putting into perspective just how absurd this would have been if the Titans somehow beat the Patriots and made it to the playoffs. After 10 weeks, the Titans had the same record as the Oakland Raiders. The Raiders wound up with the number one pick in the draft. The Titans would have wound up in the playoffs. From 1920 to 2006, there were 152 teams, excluding the Titans, who started the season with a 2-7 record. On average, they finished their season with four wins. Only one team even so much as clawed their way back to 500, with that being the 1984 Packers. And of the 152 teams to start off 2-7, and seven, none of them made the playoffs. Even the 84 Packers at 8-8 eight eight were still just the 8th best team in the NFC that season. The Titans were one game, or potentially one quarter away, from doing that. And perhaps the craziest part about this entire stretch was the manner in which this happened. During their six-game winning streak, they had five consecutive one-possession games, with each one being crazier than the next. A miracle comeback against the Giants down by 21. A 60-yard field goal to beat the Colts. An incredible overtime run by Vince Young to beat the Texans. A victory against the Jaguars where the offense never touched the ball. A two-possession comeback against Buffalo late in the fourth quarter. They seemed like a team of destiny over those final few weeks. If the Titans pulled off a victory against the Patriots and made the playoffs after starting 2-7, we would still be talking about that 2006 team to this day as one of the greatest stories in NFL history. Instead, the clock struck midnight on their Cinderella run just a bit too soon. <laughs>